Hey guys, welcome back, family of tech. If you're thinking about becoming a full-time videographer and you want to take more professional travel videos and you want to use your Sony a 400 or the new a 600 let me tell you that it's possible with these two new cameras. And they can actually give you amazing results, especially if you have the correct camera settings for video turned on. Simple things like not knowing how to adjust your white balance or knowing some of the hidden menu secrets that this camera has to offer, especially because of how complicated the menu system for Sony cameras can be, can limit your ability to shoot better videos in general and get good results. So this video is all about showing you what are the best advanced camera settings for video if you want to shoot better travel videos or if you want to shoot any paid commercial video work. On the other hand, if you want to take just better photos in general and you don't care so much about video, you can watch this other video I made before and they will tell you what are the best settings for photography for the Sony system. Alright guys, so let's not waste any more time and let's start the video. All right guys, so let's begin. So because we're talking about video work, the first thing you should do is turn the dial on your camera to movie mode. Then you're gonna go to menu two, page one, and change the exposure mode to manual mode. And that's because this way you'll be able to control the frames per second that you want, the shutter speed, the aperture, and the file format, like for example, 4K or high definition, that is gonna suit your style. If you want to shoot 4K, but you don't have a very fast computer, I would recommend that you go to proxy recording on menu two, page one, and you turn it on. This is gonna allow you to edit proxy files, not the high resolution ones, and will be less taxing on your computer. For Sony cameras, you're gonna find the proxy files on the submenu folder on the SD card. For the second step, you're gonna go to menu two, page two, and you will see AF drive speed. You can choose between fast, normal, and slow. Fast if you want to go from one subject to another, very fast, so it will be fast, but it's gonna be less accurate, or slow if you want to naturally transition from one subject to another, like for an interview or a dialogue. Slow is gonna give you a slower, but a more accurate autofocus. Audio recording, and that's on menu two, page two, make sure that it's on. Then go to audio recording level. If you're shooting with a lavalier mic, you probably want to set it at one. If you're shooting with a shotgun mic or no microphone, you can set it at 15. Wind noise reduction, that's on menu two, page three. I never turn it on because your audio will sound horrible. So make sure that you leave that off. Face eye autofocus set, that's on menu one, page six, make sure that it's on. And this one is one of the best features of this camera because it will detect the eyes of your subject, giving you a sharp image in video, especially with the A6600. Also turn on face detection frame display, and it's gonna put a box around the face and will let you that the subject is in focus. Marker display, that's on menu two, page three, make sure that it's on. Then go to marker settings, then aspect ratio. You can choose between off, or if you choose a different aspect ratio that can help you compose your image, especially if you know that your video will be displayed in other format other than 16 by nine, like for example, Instagram. Or for example, if you want to give a look to your video like it's an old movie, you can choose four by three, or if you want to choose a more cinematic look, you can choose the 235 one. AF tracking sensitivity, that's on menu two, page two. This is for how long the camera waits to refocus on your subject. Here you can select between responsive and that's going to detect anything that crosses into the frame or standard where the camera is going to try to stay with the subject that you started filming in the first place. Clear image zoom and that's one of my favorites on this camera. That's on menu two, page five. That's gonna help you zoom in with little loss in quality and it's gonna give you more reach and will turn any prime lens into almost a zoom lens. For more camera functionality, go to the setup menu on page three and make sure that you select touch panel plus pad. And that's gonna activate the touch screen function of your camera. And that's gonna allow you to track your subject with a touch of a finger. Next, go to touchpad settings also on setup menu page three. Turn touch operation in vertical orientation off. That's going to prevent the touch control to be operated when the camera is in vertical mode. And it's only gonna work when the camera is in horizontal mode. Touch position mode on absolute position. And this control whether your touch places a focus point exactly where you want it. And operation area, select whole screen. And that allows a touchpad to be entirely sensitive, not just a portion of the LCD screen. And finally, but not least, picture profiles and dynamic range. On many one, page 11, you're gonna find different picture profiles to choose from. Usually for me, I shoot video in S-Log2 or Cine4. A lot of people nowadays are shooting video in HLG, which is another picture profile that is easy to color grade. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about picture profiles and how to color grade them, so don't be afraid to experiment with those. All right guys, so those are my advanced camera settings for the new Sony APS-C cameras. Let me know in the comments below what you think of those settings or if you use something different. Also, if you have any question, please comment down below and I will try to help you out. Thanks for watching and don't forget to watch my other videos that will also help you get better videos and pictures with your Sony cameras. See you in the next one.